Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the graduation ceremony for graduates of the Division of Humanities. In a few minutes, the graduation ceremony will commence. The procession of graduates will enter first. Please remain seated while this happens. Next will follow the staff procession. You should continue to stay seated while that happens. After a brief break, the playing of the university fanfares will announce the entry of the dais party. At that point, I will signal to you that you are to rise and remain standing until the dais party is seated. Please do not stand until I ask you to. Once again, the ceremony will commence shortly.
Your Excellency, members of the University Council, members of the advisory councils of the university colleges, former Chancellor Sir Theodore Bray, Vice Chancellor Professor Webb, Vice Chancellor of Queensland University of Technology, Professor Gibson, who's our guest tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Griffith University, I extend a warm welcome to everyone present. The university is accustomed to meet in appropriate public fashion for the purpose of conferring academic awards on its graduates. These occasions hold special significance for them, their families and friends. The university is proud to claim its graduates and is conscious of the contribution which it has made to the individual achievements which are recognised tonight. We hope that their sense of appreciation of Griffith University and a fondness for it will remain with them always. The university is growing and one result of the growth is that occasions like this are held more often and they have become larger affairs attracting more visitors than previously. This interaction with our visitors is, from our point of view, very satisfying. Griffith University is now in its 21st year. Recent years have seen a dramatic expansion in student numbers and our involvement in areas of study and fields of research has expanded correspondingly. As a result of links which have been established with other institutions following federal government initiatives, Griffith has become a six campus institution. The original Nathan campus remains the administrative centre, but there are now these additions. The Mount Gravatt campus is physically separate, but is fully integrated within the university. There are, however, three Griffith University colleges with their separate campuses. One of the university colleges is at the Gold Coast, and in Brisbane there are two more, the Conservatorium of Music and the College of Art. There is also a flourishing separate campus of the Conservatorium of Music in Mackay. As a result of our expansion, the accompanying changes and the new diversity of Griffith University, our capacity to contribute to the needs of the community is markedly increased. A significant part of Griffith's cultural strength is now centred within the two colleges, the Queensland Conservatorium of Music and the Queensland College of Art. The former, a most prestigious institution, is the largest music school in Australia. The reconstitution of the Queensland College of Art as one of our colleges means that in the future the university will be graduating students in fine arts and allied areas at an impressive rate. Griffith's Gold Coast University College was the first of our colleges and it links the university closely with the Gold Coast. Griffith University now has a student population of some 15,000 having trebled its enrolment in the past five years. It's particularly involved in the region running from the south side of the Brisbane River down to and including the Gold Coast. In that area, the Gold Coast, which is described as the fastest growing in Australia, the university has a major presence and key responsibilities. Griffith has always been an innovator and I mention one example. Griffith's new School of Law commenced teaching this year. All of its programs are integrated with studies in other academic divisions of the university so that graduates will emerge with double degree qualifications and possessed of expertise in law as well as in one or other chosen specialty, politics and public policy, environmental science, Japanese and international business. The new law programs are amongst the most innovative and attractive available anywhere. 
The division of humanities from which tonight's graduates come is one of 11 academic divisions within Griffith University. In common with other divisions, it adopts an interdisciplinary approach to study and positively encourages the development of lateral thinking skills. The Division of Humanities first opened its doors to students in 1975 with an enrolment of 125. At last year's census, the division had an undergraduate enrolment of 1,365, which, with 78 postgraduate students, made a total of 1,443 students. Although the university elsewhere brings an intense structure to bear upon the languages, history and cultures of Australian Asian neighbours, the division of humanities is primarily concerned with the contemporary Western world. Programs within the division focus on the study of the problems, debates, social, political and economic institutions and cultural productions of the West. Currently, two Bachelor of Arts degree programs are offered, one in Humanities and the other in Australian and Comparative Studies. The latter is designed very much to cater for the needs of mature students who are returning to study. Some shallow views expressed from time to time question the relevance and utility of studies in Humanities. Arts graduates, it should be emphasised, are trained to think, analyse, debate and communicate. Training of this kind certainly equips them for careers in the 1990s. The general skills acquired by humanities students are valued by employers because of their very breadth. Humanities students can achieve a flexibility which assists in their appreciation of problems and assessment of contexts. Humanities graduates will find careers in areas such as teaching, media, administration and management and research. The Council for Industry and Higher Education has said that skills developed in the humanities can be as valuable to industry as those taught in more specialised vocational programmes. As business grows more complex, the ability to analyse, interpret and make detached judgments is essential. The orientation of the humanities programmes towards the Western world gains new value. The recent completion of the single European market, progress made towards monetary and political union, the impact of a newly united Germany and the changes in Eastern Europe following the revolutions of 1989 will profoundly affect Australia's future. This country's businessmen will find Europe more competitive and they will experience stronger competition in Asian and Middle Eastern markets. Heightened European influence will affect economic and cultural relationships. <coughs> The European slant of the humanities programs at Griffith makes them a popular choice for students. Our strong focus on contemporary Italy and its language is widely known. The division is establishing a program in contemporary European studies which will be unique in Queensland. It will be launched in 1993. The principal attention will be on the politics, economics and cultures of Europe with issues relevant to our state and nation receiving attention. Students in the program will be offered an opportunity to combine their studies with more specifically vocational programs in economics, marketing or international business or with courses in history, literature and languages. A wide range of new postgraduate programs is to be introduced by the division in the next two years. Two new programs are already underway, the Master of Arts in Australian Studies and the Master of Arts in Women's Studies. In the first mentioned program, the students examine issues of continuing relevance for Australian society in its politics, its cities and regions, its cultural achievements and qualities, 
industrial and economic relations and the claims of particular groups such as its Aboriginal peoples. The second program, that in women's studies, examines the development of research and teaching on women, men and gender issues across a wide range. Griffith University has become involved in a TV open learning project which has as its, as its objective the use of the medium to provide wider access to university education. The Division of Humanities, which on the university's behalf is deeply involved in this program, has adapted elements of its Australian and comparative studies to offer a course in Australian studies called Images of Australia. We're the only university in Queensland to be involved and we're working with a nationwide consortium of universities to introduce the first open learning courses this year. The university is also collaborating with the ABC in making a series of television programs as part of the project. The division heavily involves itself in research. During 1992, four of the division schools will significantly reshape their research organisation. The scope of each of those schools is indicated by its name. Australian Comparative Studies, Cultural and Historical Studies, European Studies and Film and Media. In addition, three new research centres attached to the division were created last year. May I draw this to your attention? The well-known publication, The Bulletin, recently described the Division of Humanities at Griffith University as a national up-and-comer. If this judgment is correct, and we think it is, it points to a considerable achievement for a university which had to start so far behind the earlier established tertiary institutions in this country. As we now turn to continue the formal part of tonight's proceedings, I express once again warm congratulations to each of the graduates and our best wishes for their lives ahead. I now call on the Dean of the Division of Humanities to present the graduates from the Division of Humanities who have chosen to receive their awards at this ceremony. Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Arts taken in the School of Humanities. Jacqueline Agard. <clears throat> Tracy Aldous. Marisa Arturi. Alex Baldwin. Fiona Batty. Rowena Batty. <laughs> Natasha Burrell. <laughs> Carrie Biggins. Chris Bowman. Garth Brian.
Michael Brown. Jason Buchan. Tanya Bull. Fiona Burns. Deborah Carlion. Tracy Carlsberg. Michelle Chambers. Sue Ann Chapman. <laughs> Teresa Chataway. <laughs> Lillian Chia. Anne Christie. <laughs> Scott Clark. <laughs> Cindy Coleman. Felicity Cook. Kim Cooney. Elisa Coxon. David Cram. <laughs> Julia Croft. <laughs> Vanessa Croft. Lynette Daniels. <laughs> Greg Doolan. <laughs> Mary Duran. Jennifer Dorian. <laughs> Alison Douglas. <laughs> Kylie Dragos. Bruce Drummond. <laughs> Louisa Ennis. <laughs> Nicholas Everett. Julie Everingham.
Thomas Fitzgerald. Lisa Fleming. <laughs> Meredith Fleming. <laughs> Bethany Flower. Amanda Fordham. <laughs> Nicola Franklin. <laughs> Haley Gibbs. Danielle Godier. <laughs> Suzanne Goopy. <laughs> Matthew Green. Laurie Hall. Fiona Hamwood. Michelle Harding. Murray Henman. Marcus Henry. Julie Hare Carroll. Brendan Hill. <laughs> Catherine Hillier. <laughs> Tanya Hodges. Deborah Hughes. <laughs> Belinda Hunt. <laughs> Rebecca Hurst. <laughs> Megan Jeffries. Caroline Jeffs. Cassandra Johnson. Rayleigh Joy. Sandra Lee Cantor. <laughs> Darren Kelleher. <laughs> Tracy Madonna Kennedy.
Leonard King. Simon Lydia. Catherine Lamprecht. Jacqueline Limberger. Petter Lindeberg. Sarah Linden Mayer. Sam Liu. Margaret McGuire. Belinda Marshall. Asa Masterman. Jodie McCaskill. Andrew McCabe. Darren McDonnell. Cecilia McDowell. David McAvoy. <laughs> Kelly McKinney. <clears throat> Tracy McKenzie. Charmaine McGibbon. <laughs> Rowena McManus. <laughs> Louise McNeil. Tammy Metzler. <laughs> Jennifer Millership. <laughs> Wayne Mortensen. John Moy. <laughs> David Machow. <laughs> Carmen Mukiga. Anthony Mullins. <laughs> Rachel Murray. <clears throat> Tony Nicholas. Tracy Nisbet.
Katrina Newell. Sean O'Donoghue. Rosemary O'Hagan. Christine Orpen. Andrew Peterson. Caroline Pod. Brian Probert. Rachel Prothero. Caterina Pulverenti. <laughs> Michelle Ransom. <laughs> Matthew Reed. Paul Reeves. <laughs> Bronwyn Richards. <laughs> Anne Ritchie. Catalin Robson. <laughs> Narelle Robson Petch. <laughs> Janet Ross. Kim Ross. <laughs> Ranmali Rupa Singh. <laughs> Liliana Santone. Jenny Sue Saunders. <laughs> Melita Scanlon. <laughs> Vincent Shaw. Sally Ann Shea. <laughs> Samantha Shepherd. <laughs> Amanda Simmons. Natasha Simons. <laughs> Megan Smith. <laughs> Sean
Sherilyn Smith. Shelley Smith. Michael Snead. Francis Summers. Elizabeth Spence. Erica Sprengel. Robert Stack. <laughs> Avril Stark. <laughs> James Stocks. <laughs> Ruth Stummer. Catherine Taylor. <laughs> Peter Thomas. <laughs> Colin Tyrrell. <laughs> Julian Velikov. Angela Verzi. Victor Waring. Cynthia Wilson. Paul Wilson. Andrew Wiltshire. <laughs> Tracy Ewell. <laughs> Anastasia Zarnik. Peter Zubaki. <laughs> Chancellor, I present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Arts in Australian and Comparative Studies taken in the School of Humanities. Greg Ball. Barbara Brown. <laughs> Phyllis Davy. <laughs> Joy Dever. Carol Elder. <laughs> Heather Hawker. <laughs> Erica Hinchy.
Carol Jang. Lloyd Johnson. Sandra Malmstead. Marilyn Martin. Violet Mathiason. David Melville. <laughs> Margaret Redsell. <laughs> Tina Riken. Christine Severin. <laughs> Brenda Shirley. <laughs> Jean Spellman. Loma Spencer. <laughs> Pat Vanderbeek. <laughs> Irene Waters. Chancellor, the school medal may be awarded annually to the graduate from each school with the highest academic achievement in a bachelor's degree program. The medal is not awarded if there is no candidate of sufficient merit. Chancellor, I am pleased to present to you the graduate who has been granted the 1991 School of Humanities Medal, Teresa Chatterwell. Chancellor, I am pleased to present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Arts with first class honours taken in the Division of Humanities. Jenny Fleming. <laughs> Michelle Jago. Pamela Murray. <laughs> Jan Williams. Chancellor, I am pleased to present to you graduates who have been granted the Bachelor of Arts with second class honours, Division A, taken in the Division of Humanities. Heidi David Parson. <laughs> Joan Hemming. Meredith Chaos. <laughs> Lord
Lara King. Carol Quadrell. <laughs> Rosalind van der Kruck. <laughs> Matthew Wengard. Chancellor, the University Medal may be awarded to a graduate who has completed the requirements for both a bachelor's degree of the university and a degree with honours in recognition of academic excellence. Such an award is a rare honour and is not awarded in any year in which merit has not been earned. Chancellor, I am pleased to present to you a graduate of the Division of Humanities who has been granted a 1991 University Medal, Pamela Murray. Chancellor, all the graduates of the coursework programs of the Division of Humanities who are present today have had their awards conferred upon them. I will now receive a candidate for the award of Doctor of Philosophy. I call upon the chairperson of the academic committee to present the candidate. Mr. Chancellor, the degree of Doctor of Philosophy is awarded to a candidate who has successfully completed a prescribed program of study, principally of research. A thesis embodying the outcome of the research is the principal basis of examination as to whether the candidate has satisfied the requirement for the degree. The degree is only awarded if the examiners are satisfied that the thesis makes a significant and original contribution to knowledge and the understanding of the field of study with which it is concerned. Today, the university is proud to honour one of its Doctor of Philosophy graduates who has satisfied these rigorous criteria for the award of the degree. Mr Chancellor, I have much pleasure in presenting to you a graduate of the Division of Humanities, Regina Gatner, for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. With the authority of the Council, I shall now confer the degree of Doctor of the University. I call upon the Vice-Chancellor to make this presentation. Chancellor, Walter Benjamin Campbell was born in Baringba in New South Wales in 1921 and moved with his family to Toowoomba in 1925. After receiving his secondary education at the Downlands College, 
Sir Walter attended the University of Queensland where he studied arts and law. As an undergraduate, Sir Walter developed his well-known zest for university life. His student years were witness to a number of notable and somewhat varied achievements, including election to the position of editor of the student newspaper. It was perhaps while serving in this position that Sir Walter's well-known command of the English language was first widely appreciated. As well as serving as president of the University Law Student Society, he was leader of the university debating team and winner of the Virgil Power Prize for the student showing the greatest proficiency in the final two years of the law course. During this period of his life, Sir Walter also saw five years active service as a pilot in the Royal Australian Air Force. Indeed, he was serving in the Air Force when he completed his arts degree through external study. After returning from war service, Sir Walter completed a master's degree in philosophy in 1947 and a law degree with first class honours in 1948. He has since maintained a long and fruitful association with the University of Queensland, serving as a member of the board of the Faculty of Law until 1976, the University Senate from 1963 to 1985, and as Chancellor from 1977 to 1985. His many contributions to that institution were recognised in 1980 when the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws was conferred upon him. Similar tributes by other Queensland universities have followed. In 1988, the James Cook University of North Queensland conferred on him the honorary degree of Doctor of Letters, and in 1991, the Queensland University of Technology conferred on him the honorary degree of Doctor of the University. Sir Walter's contributions to the legal profession have been prodigious. He was admitted to the Queensland Bar in 1948 and became a Queen's Counsel in 1960. After serving as president of the Queensland Bar Association from 1965 to 1967, and as president of the Australian Bar Association from 1966 to 1967, he was appointed a justice of the Supreme Court of Queensland in 1967. During these years, Sir Walter was renowned for his profound legal knowledge, a keen sense of justice, and an indefatigable capacity for work. The apex of his distinguished legal career was reached when his appointment, with his appointment as Chief Justice of Queensland in February 1982. Sir Walter's exceptional abilities have been turned successfully to, another, to a number of other important officers throughout his career. He has served as Chairman of the Queensland Law Reform Commission from 1969 to 1973, Chairman of the Commonwealth Remuneration Tribunal from 1974 to 1982, sole member of the Commonwealth Academic Salaries Tribunal from 1974 to 1978, a director of the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust from 1969 to 1980, and chairman of the Board of Governors of the Utah Foundation from 1977 to 1985. Sir Walter was appointed Governor of Queensland in July 1985. Sir Walter's eminent contributions to the law and service to the community have been recognised with a number of prestigious honours. He was created a Knight Bachelor in 1979 and a Knight of Grace of the Order of St John in 1986. This was followed in 1989 by his appointment as a Companion of the Order of Australia. Griffith University's Law School, which was officially launched on the 24th of February this year, has also been the beneficiary of Sir Walter's personal interest and support. Sir Walter facilitated the school's development by opening Government House to enable the Law Planning Committee to meet with members of the profession to discuss significant issues of accreditation. He honoured the university by performing the official opening of the school. It is especially fitting that the Council of Griffith University should honour Sir Walter Campbell in recognition of his distinguished contributions to the community generally and to Griffith University in particular. Mr Chancellor, it is with great pleasure that I present to you His Excellency the Governor of Queensland, Sir Walter Benjamin Campbell, for admission to the degree of Doctor of the University.
I now call upon His Excellency, the Governor of Queensland, Sir Walter Campbell, Doctor of the University, to deliver the occasional address. Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, members of council, members of staff and graduates, and the Vice-Chancellor of the Uni uh, Queensland University of Technology who is with us this evening, and ladies and gentlemen. I am touched by the great honour which Griffith University Council has bestowed upon me, and I am proud to become an honorary doctor of the university. Griffith University, which was founded only 21 years ago, has, in that short space of time, earned a reputation in teaching and research which confirms that it is one of Australia's leading centres of innovation and scholarly excellence. Having come of age, as it were, it is now well established as the state's third oldest university, having enrolled its first students one year after the University College of Townsville was proclaimed the James Cook University of North Queensland. I remember well the genesis of this university. I can recall that the chairman of the interim council which guided its development, Sir Theodore Bray, was in its early days housed in an office in Tuong. And then when the university was proclaimed, Sir Theodore became the first chancellor. The original buildings were constructed on the new campus on a wooden site, as you know, it was known for many years as Tui Forest in the suburb of Nathan. It has been fascinating to watch the university grow in stature and in reputation to the point where it now comprises the Nathan campus, the adjoining Mount Gravatt campus, the Gold Coast University Counts, uh, campus and the Queensland Conservatorium of Music, as the uh, Chancellor has just said. The Division of Humanities enrolled its first students, I believe, in 1975. In that year, 125 students formed the foundation class, and last year, a total of 1,443 students were enrolled in undergraduate and postgraduate programs in the Division of Humanities, a tremendous rate of growth to have taken place over a mere 17 years. While the longer established schools within the university have expanded, new schools have also been made in recent years. And only six weeks ago, as the Vice-Chancellor has just mentioned, I was honoured to perform the official opening of the Griffith University School of Law. The first four integrated programs in that school build on the established strengths of this university. And they will graduate, the school will graduate students with degrees in law and politics and public policy, law and environmental science, law and Japanese, and law and international business. The innovative design of the Griffith Law Program is in keeping with the mission of the university, which in part seeks to address themes of importance to the various communities it serves, enabling its students to gain knowledge, scholarly values, and generic and specific skills. As graduates will be aware, students within the Division of Humanities are primarily concerned with the contemporary Western world. Uh, naturally, the focus of such studies in a constantly changing world is not static, rather it is dynamic. In response to developments in Europe, a new program as you know, is to be launched in 1993 to study the politics, economics and cultures of Europe with special attention given to the impact of Australia of changes in those countries. The magnitude of the consequences of the changes now taking place in Europe can only be imagined. The nations of that region are moving rapidly in the direction of economic and political unification. And if the countries of northern and eastern Europe participate in that process, Europe will become a vast entity of some 400 million people. In an address, a recent address, entitled This Unpredicted, Unpredictable World, delivered by Sir Avi Pabo to the, Universe, uh, to the, sorry, the Hawthorne Institute of Education, 
uh, only last September, I understand, he reminded his audience that a little over 100 years ago, there were in Europe separate regions such as Prussia, Bavaria, and Westphalia, but no Germany. There were also Umbria, Lombardia, Piedmont, Tuscany, and Abruzzi, but no Italy. There was no Poland, no Czechoslovakia, and no independent Hungary. In the recent past, the map of Europe has again been radically redrawn, and with the changes now taking place, it is apparent that the peoples of that continent will continue to regroup themselves in the years ahead. The revolution since 1989 and the struggle in Yugoslavia between the Croats and the Serbs, the flight from Albania and the economic problems to be overcome in what we know as the Commonwealth of Independent States and the surrounding Eastern European countries, for example, all have enormous implications for the future of Europe and for the world. Changes beyond Europe over the past century have been equally dramatic. The empires of the British, the French, the Dutch, the Portuguese and so on have all undergone the process of decolonization. Communist revolutions in Russia and China replaced the feudal structures of those societies with monolithic central bureaucracies. The edifice of the Soviet republics has now crumbled and minor forms of capitalist enterprise are being tolerated even in China. The Japanese went from being an isolated and inward-looking people controlled by the samurai to become one of the most productive, export-oriented and widely travelled people. Australian foreign policy for the first half of this century was dominated by fear of Japan and this latter half uh, by our desire to court her. I mention these matters as examples of some of the momentous changes which already have had an impact on Australia or which will shape its future. The new course in contemporary European studies to be launched next year will, I understand, equip students to discuss and to analyse and to write about the implications of some of these changes. The disciplines which are, are encompassed by the humanities have always sought to understand, to describe, and to make predictions about the human condition. Yet studies and research in the humanities, and I include, of course, here the social sciences, have recently been under threat by government priorities in favour of econ economic and technological education. There can be no doubt that Australia needs a productive economy, but it is doubtful that devaluing and underfunding the humanities will assist Australia to meet its needs in the year 2000 and beyond. While indubitably we need engineers, scientists, doctors and lawyers in order to progress economically and technologically, we also need people who have been taught to reason, to assess evidence and to understand our society. Australians need to understand the uh, cultures and the languages of our neighbours in Asia, the Pacific and Europe. We need as well to comprehend our own nation and culture. The capacity to discriminate fact from misinformation, reason from ideology, are skills which are essential for Australia's future in a world undergoing extraordinary change. Humanities courses taught with rigour and with scholarship develop in students these qualities, the ability to question, to reason and to draw conclusions. Furthermore, the maintenance of a humane, tolerant, democratic and free society depends also on there being many people with the questioning, critical and socially focused attitudes such as those cultivated by study of the humanities. So, Mr. Chancellor, I am delighted that Griffith University has devoted a substantial proportion of its resources to teaching and research in the humanities. 
This evening, as I understand, 230-odd graduates have been awarded Bachelors of Arts degrees in Humanities and in Australian Comparative Studies. In the latter two years of their courses, they have been able to elect to concentrate their studies, I'm told, on such areas as Australian studies, politics and society, women, gender and society, Italian studies, culture and politics, history and philosophy of science, literature and sociology and so on. Like earlier graduates from these courses, they will find employment uh, in a great diversity of occupations. In, university, in, in universities, in management, the public service, public relations, the media, business and so on. Arts graduates are valued by their employers for their flexibility, written and verbal communication skills, and for their ability to adapt themselves to many different workplaces. So to those people who are graduating this evening, I stress that this ceremony marks but the first phase in a lifelong process of education and training which should continue throughout your working lives. You have been taught methods of inquiry and analysis, and I hope that you have developed already a questioning critical approach to events in the world around you. In whatever area of the public or private sector you elect to work and to contribute to the welfare of your country, you will come to appreciate that your competence over the years ahead will depend a great deal on what is often called, of course, continuing education. And I hope that as you emerge from this university, you are armed also with a sound, broad and general education upon which to build specific practical skills and to grasp the increased knowledge which you will gain through experience and in-service education. A mind which habitually reaches outwards to grasp new areas of knowledge and to comprehend change as you proceed through life will be the most valuable asset in your possession. So finally, I congratulate all the graduates on their success, and I wish you all good fortune. <clears throat> Chancellor. It's my pleasure to thank Sir Walter for his address to us this evening and his remarks to our graduates and it gives me great pleasure to do so. Sir Walter has uh, drawn attention to the fact that Griffith is now the third oldest university in Queensland and it's a way of thinking about ourselves to which we will have to grow more accustomed as there are now several newer institutions. He has I think uh, encouraged us very much in the direction of development of humanities at Griffith by his references to Europe and to our proposal for a, to introduce a, a new degree in European studies in 1993. And I'm sure members of staff of the division uh, have drawn great encouragement from that. I was struck by a particular phrase in Sir Walter's address which I want to draw attention in conclusion. He mentioned that Australia's foreign policy was once dominated by fear, fear in particular of Asia and that part of the world. It occurs to me, Chancellor, that Sir Walter himself is a person who has never been dominated by fear. And I must say I'd like to take this opportunity to record the fact that in my time at Griffith he has frequently acted in a way that ins has inspired me not to be dominated by fear either. So thank you, Sir Walter, for all your help to Griffith. We're sorry that Lady Campbell couldn't be with us tonight. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for the honour you've done us by accepting an honorary degree of the university. Ladies and gentlemen, would you join again in thanking His Excellency for his address. Ladies and gentlemen, in 
conclusion, may I add my congratulations to those already expressed to our graduates on their fine achievements and wish them all the best in the future, and in particular to encourage them all to join the Griffith University Alumni Association and to support us throughout their entire careers. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, would you all now please rise to join the members of the Conservatorium Chamber Singers in singing the traditional student song, Gade Amos Igatur. You'll find the words and music of the song printed on page 20 of your program. The song will be played through once in its entirety as an introduction before we begin to sing. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is now concluded. When the fanfares begin, please remain standing as the dais party, the staff processions, and the graduates retire. Mm -hmm. 